Hey friends, it's Liz, your official craft nerd, and today I have a very special video for you. Today is the Inspired Me collaboration, and it is hosted by Amber at DIY with Amber, and all of us ladies were involved in recreating pieces that inspired us from each of our own DIYs. So stay tuned and see what we made. So my first piece was inspired by Amber over at DIY with Amber. And if you haven't checked her channel out, you guys, it is amazing. She is so creative, so talented, so sweet. You will absolutely love her and her channel will be linked down below. Uh, but this is the piece I was inspired by. I really loved how this turned out and it definitely fit her style. And I knew I wanted to recreate it in my own way for my style. So let's see how I did it. So I'm starting with these uh, wood block drawer things that Dollar Tree had forever and you can probably still find them there. I've had quite a few of these on stock for some time now because I'm kind of a hoarder when it comes to my craft supplies. <laughs> so all I'm doing here is trying to find four of them that lined up evenly because if you all know, Dollar Tree items are not all created equal. So they are all different sizes and Unfortunately, you don't always get the perfect size ones that match up, but I was able to find four that did the job. Then I also had some of these larger crates that didn't have the space between the slats. I love these crates. I've used them in plenty of DIYs before and I thought they would be perfect. So in my inspiration, um, or not in my inspiration, but the inspiration I took from this, I decided I wanted to have the drawers on the bottom and I wanted the crates on the top. So I'm taking two of the crates, I'm placing them on the top of these drawers, and then I have a third crate that I'm going to place right on the very top of the other two. And I'm just using some hot glue and some of this super glue, wood glue that I found at the Dollar Tree. So I've removed the drawers and I'm flipping them around because I don't want those cutouts to be what is showing. I'm gonna put little handles on these. Uh, but my trick here is just taking some tape just to make sure that I know how those drawers are supposed to fit <laughs> in those boxes because sometimes if you put them in wrong, they will get stuck and you can't get them out. So um, I did that and then I'm just taking some of this spackle filler just to kind of fill in those little gaps in between uh, the wood pieces there. And I would have used wood filler, but it would have taken too long to dry. So this worked just fine. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and paint this all uh, with Rust-Oleum chalk paint in white, or no, not white, linen. Y'all, I've used it enough times you think I would know <laughs> what it's called. Uh, but I decided for these projects today, they're all going to be using this Rust-Oleum uh, linen chalk paint, uh, keeping it nice and bright and, you know, going with my style. So... Uh, I started off with that awesome brush in the beginning, but of course this project had a lot of little grooves and everything, so I just took a regular old flat brush uh, and finished painting it. I am painting the whole thing. So I'm painting the outside, I'm painting the back. It is completely up to you if you want to paint the back. I mean, if nobody's going to see it, it doesn't matter, but uh, I wanted it to be finished. Uh, I painted the inside of the crates as well and along the front. Um, anything that is showing that had that wood, I wanted it completely covered. And you can kind of see here, I got the inside of those crates. Now the drawers, I'm not worried about because nobody's going to see the inside of those drawers. So again, a completely optional uh, thing for you to do if you wanted to paint those as well. Now I do paint three sides of this, uh, of the drawers themselves. Uh, I am going to put something on the front of them, but I did want the sides to be painted as well as the front and I do actually go in and kind of uh, paint some of the inner edges of the drawers. It again is personal preference on if you want to do that. I had this really pretty scrap paper that I just absolutely loved the color and there's like little faint roses in it and I knew I wanted to decoupage these to the front of my drawers. So what I'm doing here is just wetting the edges. I just took a baby wipe and I'm wetting the edges and then I'm just going to kind of tear them up. I wanted it to look, you know, used and worn and rough because again, you guys know that I love to do that. I love things to look used and worn and vintagey and all of that good stuff. So I do that to all four of these squares before I'm putting them on my box drawers. 
So now I'm coming back with my Mod Podge and I'm going to put a coat down so I can put my pieces of scrap paper on top of my drawers. And of course I'm going to cover them as well with the Mod Podge. I'm going to seal it down. And uh, I just, I loved how these looked, you guys. Like, I am kind of addicted to Mod Podging now, if you guys hadn't already <laughs> figured out. But it is such a cool way to, you know, spruce up anything or just give something a, a different feel. Um, it's, it's one of my favorite things to do, honestly, right now. So um, I am a plaid affiliate, so I will definitely leave some links down below. And Mod Podge, of course, is by plaid. So uh, once it's all said and done, I'm taking some of this pink paint, which is from Folk Art. It is called Willow Mist. It's also a chalk paint. And I'm just dry brushing it all over my creation. So I, I don't really know what to call this, my little drawer shelf thingy. <laughs> uh, but I'm just dry brushing the entire thing. I'm going to go on the inside of the crates as well as the outside. And I'm also going to do the edges up on my drawers as well. And of course, it would not be me if I didn't bust out the antique wax and also use that and dirty up the image on the front. For me, it just makes it more worn looking and it's just something I absolutely love to do. So I found these little handles. These were in the paper crafting section at Hobby Lobby and they were on sale. So I picked up a couple packs, which I'm glad I did. Uh, they do have little screws. You can screw these in. However, one of my packs did not have the screws. So I decided I needed to use at least one of those others because they only came in packs of three. I'm just using super glue. I have some of this super glue gel and it worked perfect on putting these handles down and I loved how those looked and you guys they just fit so perfectly back in there and the handles pull well the super glue holds it nice and tight and this was the final product I love this one so thank you so much Amber for the inspiration I really hope I did this justice and I hope that you guys like it too My next inspiration piece comes from Lisa at Living My Best Life with Lisa. These wall sconces, I was floored. I absolutely loved these and I wanted them so much for my own home. I love the color, I love the doorknobs. Oh, I wish I had those doorknobs. So I decided I had to recreate this, of course. I found these wood pieces from Hobby Lobby and I just decided these were gonna work. These were perfect. I'm gonna coat it with my uh, Rust-Oleum chalk paint. Again, same color in the linen. And uh, I do the front and the back on both of these. Now I don't show you all the painting cause y'all know how to paint. So <laughs> no need to do that. But I did completely cover it front and back uh, mainly because I always like to see how the paint takes to the wood uh, to decide what side I'm gonna actually do my um, actual decals or extra work to. So I'm taking that same pink paint from before and I'm going to just dry brush this uh, onto my uh, sconces is what they're going to be. And you know, I got a little heavy with it, but it's okay. It's okay. You guys, it's, I love that this style, this shabby chic look, it doesn't have, you know, a perfect way to do it. You guys just do whatever you feel looks pleasing. Like I did go back. I did sand it down a little bit just because I did get a little heavy on there, but it's completely up to you. If, if you want to leave it heavy like that, I mean, whatever, do you. And I thought it just looked fantastic. And of course, there's my little ladybug. Always got to join in on the videos and clean up my messes, but I love that thing. So what I'm doing here is just measuring out where I'm going to end up placing my hooks. I wanted it to be 
pretty even and you know you guys I eyeball stuff <laughs> so much that you know I, I need to get out of that that's a bad habit because things will come out crooked and off center and yeah so I actually try to measure that out uh, I'm taking my hooks I'm painting them I'm gonna rough them up to make them look worn uh, but then I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna drill these down into or screw them down into my uh, wood planks super easy these particular hooks had two different holes to scroll in uh, scroll in words you guys to drill in and I loved how these looked once I had them into my sconces now once those were done I had these uh, mason jars that I got from Dollar Tree and these had the little hangers on them now I thought it was a little too plain so I decided I'm gonna tape off uh, the bottom halves of these and I'm going to give them a coat of paint I am using that same paint color again I am obsessed with it I love these very pale blush pink colors they just I don't know they give me all the feels you guys so I'm doing it so I'm just gonna coat both of the bottoms of these jars and the purpose behind it too now I will tell you it took about two coats to really kind of cover them up but the purpose is is I'm gonna put flowers in these and I just you know I don't want to see all this stuff that you have to stick flowers into uh, if you decide to use the, the foam or uh, anything like that or if you're just gonna just stick your flowers in there I didn't want to see the bottom halves so there was some uh, method to my madness for this but uh, peeling the tape off always a very uh, enjoyable thing I love seeing those crisp lines and of course I have to keep going and so I'm adding some of this ribbon also I found this at Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna glue it around the top of the line that I painted on both of these mason jars so my plan is to hang the mason jar off of my hook now it hung just fine um, the only thing is is I knew it was going to probably move around a little bit and I just wanted to have just a little bit of extra security for that so I just took a little dab of some hot glue and stuck it behind the back end of that jar and actually it was on the ribbon and I loved how these turned out Lisa I hope I did you justice for these I really love these and these are going to be hanging in my home for some time So my next inspiration piece is by my buddy Nadia over at DIY with Nadia. She is the queen of all wreaths. She makes some beautiful wreaths like this one right here, which is what inspired me. I loved the bows, the simplicity of it, the burlap, the lace. So of course I had to try to make it my own. So I'm using this green uh, foam floral wreath from the Dollar Tree. And I am going to wrap it in some of this linen fabric. I ordered this from Amazon and I've got it in like three different colors and a ton of it. And it was a really good deal. So I'll leave that link down below for you guys as well. Uh, but I just cut strips of it. I wasn't being perfect with it. I knew this is just going to be the base for my wreath. So I'm just wrapping it up so it doesn't need to be all pristine and perfect unless that's, hey, if that's what you want, then you guys do you. Uh, but I just wanted to get that green covered up and I didn't want to have to paint it. So once this was completely covered up and good to go, then I decided I wanted to make sure I had that bow effect on there, kind of like how Nadia's was. Now, I am not the greatest at making bows. I kind of just fake it till I make it <laughs> when it comes to these. Uh, and basically all I did was kind of wrap this particular ribbon around my fingers a few times and then kind of pinched it in the middle to give it that form of a bow and then I'm just going to take some twine and just wrap it and tie it around the middle of that and that was all there was to this burlap bow. I love this particular ribbon. I got this from the his and her section at Hobby Lobby which is the wedding section 
and I think it's beautiful. It has a very little pearl inlay in there and it just, I just thought it was gorgeous. So I'm gonna make, uh, I think it's like five or six of these bows and I'm gonna have those placed around my wreath. So my favorite type of bow to make is a scrappy bow. They are the easiest to do, anybody can make them, and they just look so pretty. I went ahead and kind of pre-cut all the different materials I wanted in my scrappy bow. So I have different kinds of ribbon, I have some of that linen, like I said, I got a couple different colors of it, so I have two different colors. And basically you're just gonna put however many pieces of these down, just in an X pattern, crisscrossing each other, and then you will take a piece of twine and just kind of tie it around the middle. And then you just fluff this out how you how you like it. And you can make this as big and full as you want. Um, I thought for the amount that I used in this, which don't quote me because I really don't remember how many pieces I used. Um, I think it was like eight. Maybe I can count as I watch myself do it. But um, you can make them as big as you want. You can, you can make them really full. You can make them really big, whatever. Um, but I felt like for the size of this wreath, I didn't need to have it too super crazy big, but I'm going to make probably the same amount that I did for the other burlap bows. I think it was about six of them. And once they're all made and ready to go, I'm just going to start gluing them down onto my wreath. This was such an easy and quick project. Like I absolutely loved this. And I think that they're so easy to make that anybody can do them. And with shabby chic, you guys, I know I've said it before, but there's really no room for error. Like you can't make a mistake on that, if that makes sense. Like it's supposed to look shabby. It's supposed to look crazy. And it's supposed to just be all things, you know, that are so pretty and appealing to the eye just kind of mashed together. And I love that. Um, what I'm doing here is just any areas that kind of look like they might've been missing, um, you know, they needed something there to make it a little bit fuller. I just took some of that longer strips of linen and just kind of wrapped it around and tied it. That was it, you guys. So Nadia, I really hope I did you justice <laughs> for this wreath. I hope it's approved uh, because I really like it and I kind of want to make more now. So let me know what y'all think. So last but not least, I got inspired from Daphne over at Daphne's Homescape with this super adorable little flower pot uh, stack creation that she made. And I have seen these made before and thought, oh my gosh, I need to try to do this. So again, this is another really, really easy project, you guys. I'm literally taking these pots that I had done as a project before. And, you know, I know I get a lot of questions on what do you do with all your stuff? Like, do you keep it? Do you give it away? And a lot of times, you guys, I will just reuse it. You know, I will deconstruct things and put them back to use in a different way. And I love doing that. So I'm just painting over these super easy, super quick. Uh, I do paint on the inside of them as well, just because, you know, you, you might get to see a little bit of the white, just depending on how you uh, set these up. But... I love painting these terracotta pots because it dries so quick, like it's amazing. Uh, I'm using one of these dowel rods uh, that you can get from Dollar Tree. And I do uh, end up trimming this down, but uh, it depends on how many pots that you use. I just use the two. You can probably put three on one of these dowel rods if you wanted to have that uh, real tall flowing you know, feel with your plants. Uh, but I just thought this, well, honestly, I just had the two <laughs> pots, so that's what I'm using. Um, I'm just taking some more of that linen fabric. I'm just going to cover the ends just because, you know, you guys, like I can't leave anything plain. I've got to, I've got to keep adding stuff to it. So it is what it is. But once I have those done, I'm going to go ahead and take some um, hot glue. I'm going to put it down at the base of my pot. I'm going to put a block of this floral foam down in there just to help give my rod some stability. And then I am trying to basically figure out how I'm going to set this up. So I stick the 
uh, dowel through the top one and then as you see here I'm just going to take my miter scissors here and um, or pliers or whatever you call them and I'm trimming it down and then I'm going to stick that down into my pot. I do add some hot glue inside the hole and then I'm going to add some on the outside as well just to make sure that it's nice and secure. And then in the top pot, I'm gonna also add some hot glue around the bottom, around the dowel that's sticking through it, just to make sure that it stays nice and secure. So I do end up taking this little wood slice that I had and gluing it to the bottom of my pot just to add some more stability to this because once you do add some florals in there, you need to have that base weighted down a little bit so it doesn't fall over. Uh, but that was all she wrote on this, you guys. Like, I thought this was so adorable. Yes, I added some more decal, obviously, you know, those little uh, button uh, florals there. But Daphne, I hope that I did this justice as well for you. And tell me what you guys think. What did you guys like out of all of this? What was your favorite? Uh, I had so much fun doing this collaboration, you guys, like it was, it was, I don't know. It's, it's so cool to be able to get inspired by other crafters, other creators, and just being able to do your own thing to them. So this was my final setup, you guys, like, again, tell me what y'all think. What was your favorite? And ladies, everyone that has joined in on this collaboration, thank you so much for inspiring me and I cannot wait to see what y'all create. And guys, please, please, please make sure to check out the playlist and see what everybody else did. It's going to be worth it, you guys. Like, seriously, I love this stuff. And of course y'all thank you so much for watching if you're new here i hope you stick around hit subscribe and that like button below and if you're coming back thank you guys i love y'all and until next time stay safe